already. And today I'm finding out about cars. They have loads of different parts. Do you know what this round part is? That's right, it's the steering wheel. And this part here is called the bonnet. But do you know what's underneath? Now, you should never open a bonnet without a grown-up, but I've got special permission to show you what's inside. Let's take a look. It's the car's engine. But do you know how an engine's made? Let's find out. How is it made? Car engine. Car engines are made here. In a car engine factory! Factory, they can make 1,300 car engines every day. But what's inside a car engine? Let's find out. It has 750 parts, but all engines have the same few basic parts. This is the cylinder head and the bottom section is the cylinder block. They're the main bits of the engine and they hold everything else together. Inside, spark plugs light fuel to make energy, which makes the pistons go up and down. This turns the crankshaft, which sends power to a part of the car, which makes the wheels move. And all of these parts are made from big bits of metal, like these. They're called aluminium. Aluminium is a good metal to make car engines from because it's light, strong, and it lasts well in the cold and rain. But these don't look like cylinder blocks or heads, do they? The aluminium has to be melted in one of these. It's a furnace. This turns the solid aluminium into a runny liquid called molten aluminium. A forklift truck then takes the molten aluminium over to a pressure casting machine, where it will be poured into a mould. But it's quite tricky to see, so I've given my special camera to Declan, who's going to put it closer to the machine. Look, can you see the robot arm? It's pushing the mould into the machine. The machine then presses together, and the hot molten aluminium is poured into the mould. And after it's cooled down and gone hard, finished engine block is taken out of the machine. The aluminium has taken on a completely new shape. Now it looks like a cylinder block. Next, the top of the engine has to be made, the cylinder head. To make the shape of the cylinder head, it has special parts that go inside and are made with a material called a sand core. Can you guess what it's made from? That's right, sand and a sticky glue that we call resin. I think this one looks a bit like a face. The sand core is put inside the cylinder head, so when it goes into the casting machine, the molten aluminium makes a shape around the sand core before it cools down. This cylinder head has come out of the cooling machine and it's nearly ready to go, but we still need to get the sand core out of the middle. into this machine, where tiny rods push the sand core out. And look, all the sand core has gone, and the cylinder head is full of holes. Next, the cylinder heads are brought here to an area called machining, and there are lots of machines that drill smaller holes into the aluminium. Every time one of these robots drills or makes a hole, it leaves a little piece of aluminium. But this is called swarf, and swarf can be recycled and be used again. But our engine still isn't finished. All the parts need to be taken to the assembly line on these little robots called engine bees. Hi! It even sings! goes along the assembly line, it's all these people's jobs to fit lots of important parts. It's very busy, like spark plugs to start the engine. 
pistons to turn the crankshaft and the crankshaft to turn the wheels. Every person has 44 seconds to do their job on the assembly line. So that means every 44 seconds, a brand new engine is made. And here it is, ready to be checked over and put into a car. I love seeing how car engines are made. What was your favourite part? Can you remember the name of the metal used to make the cylinder block? That's right, it's called aluminium. Did you hear the song the AGV played when it was driving around? And did you see the runny molten aluminium being poured into the casting machine? Wasn't that interesting, seeing how car engines are made? And they're put into cars, just like this one, that are then delivered to garages, ready to be sold to people across the country. But do you know how lots of cars can be moved all at the same time? How does that work? Let's find out. How does it work? Car transporter. Have you ever seen one of these driving around before? This is a car transporter. They are huge, aren't they? This one is 19 metres long and they have to be strong too. When this one is fully loaded, it can weigh around 44 tonnes and that's the same as around 29 hippopotamuses. That's a lot of hippos. Let's count how many cars are on this one car transporter. Ready? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven cars! That means one driver can deliver eleven cars in one trip. But how do all these cars get onto the car transporter? To find out, I think we need to take a closer look. The transporter has eleven movable platforms one for each car. The first car is driven on backwards. The wheels are fixed in place using blocks called chocks and strong straps. Each platform has hydraulic arms. Inside the hydraulic arms are tubes full of oil. When the lever at the bottom of the platform is pulled, the oil is sucked upwards inside the tube and the oil pushes the arm up, lifting the platform. The hydraulic arms can move the platform in different directions, up, down, forwards and backwards to make sure the car is in exactly the right place. When the first three cars are on their platforms, another lever is pulled. More hydraulic arms lift the three cars up at the same time, out of the way, ready to get more cars on. The next set of cars are driven onto their platforms. The hydraulic arms move them into the right place. And when all 11 cars are on, the car transporter is ready to go. Isn't that brilliant? But I think we should see it for ourselves, don't you? It's Andy's job to drive all 11 cars on board the transporter. So we can see that they go on the right order, I'm putting some numbered stickers on the cars. So we can see Andy moving the levers and loading the cars. I've put one of my special cameras on Andy's head. OK, camera's rolling. Over to you. First, on goes car number one. Onto the top deck. Now Andy has to make sure it's safe and secure. Can you hear that clicking sound? That's the ratchet on the strap and that helps to make sure the car doesn't move around too much when the transport is moving. Next, on go the chocks under the wheels. Then Andy drives car number two. 
and car number three onto the transporter. Now the first three cars are on, can you remember what happens next? That's right, they all move up together. Look, when Andy moves the lever, oil goes into the hydraulic arms that push the cars up. It's up. The platform with the three cars is called the top deck. Andy's given me special permission to ride in car number four as he reverses it onto the car transporter. And I'm going to bring my special camera along with me. Okay, seatbelt on. Here we go. Can you hear the beeps? That means that we're reversing onto the car transporter. <laughs> Whoa! We are going right over the top of the cab. Whoa! <laughs> well, that was exciting. Time to get out. Now that cars five and six are on, I'm going to film the rest with my special camera and record something called a time lapse. And a time lapse is when we film something that happens quite slowly, but when we watch it back, we can see things happening much quicker. The car number seven is reversed on and goes underneath five and six. And next, you guessed it, car number eight. I love seeing how the hydraulic arms tilt the decks with the cars on them. And here are cars number nine and number 10. We're nearly there. And there's the last one, number 11. Now all the cars are on the transporter. We can see the special order that they had to be loaded on. One, two and three are right at the top at the back of the transporter and four, five and six are at the front by the cab. And then we have seven parked underneath, eight and nine are in the middle and then 10 is parked above number 11. And that's it, the car transporter is ready to deliver the cars. I loved seeing how a car transporter works. What was your favourite part? Can you remember what it's called when Andy drives the car backwards? That's right, it's called reversing. Did you hear the sound the ratchet made when Andy secured the cars? And did you see my special camera speed up all the cars loaded onto the transporter? So the next time you drive in a car, you'll know how its engine was made. And when you see a car transporter, you'll know how it works. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. There are lots of